What's up, y'all? Welcome to the vlog. Good morning. How are you? So, I'm sitting in my car. Samara is in there testing for the week. Passing her grades off. Getting her A's and B's. Hopefully A's. Um, and I thought I would hop on and do a video about what has happened today in our journey in autism. So... We've had a respite care provider for a couple of weeks now, and she comes three times, a, three times a week, which is super helpful for Samara. It gives her a break during the week, and then like days like today where I can be at the house, but I can get to the grocery store, I can do all that stuff. Like It's super helpful for those days, and that's what the respite care is there for. However, unfortunately, our very first experience with the respite care provider has ended in me having to ask for a new provider and we're super new to this you guys like we we're so new to the autism life Jack is only three well she's gonna be four in like six months a little over six months so she's three and a half and she goes to school now, which has made such a difference for her. But the in the mornings, like we just we need a little bit more help with her. So we we entered this respite care program. And who is this? Hold on, guys. Life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. Okay, I'm back. So, <clears throat> I have noticed after the first week or so, so it's three times a week, so after the first couple visits, I gave her time to be, um, to get more comfortable with Jack, to like interact with her, get to know her tics, her, her likes and her dislikes and made it very clear we have activities for Jack in the morning. She can do her puzzles, she can color, she can paint, she can go outside and play. Um, she comes kind of early, like eight o'clock on, on two days a week before school. So she has breakfast already and then I was very clear that I didn't want Jack just sitting in front of a TV because it's very easy as a parent and not just a parent to an autistic child but it's very easy just to sit your kid in front of a TV and just do whatever you have to do. Jack is not easy that way in the sense where she gets bored very easily, uh, even with TV. So if it's not stimulating her, she freaks out and she, you know, starts throwing things and you have to come in and be like, what's wrong? And she'll point at the TV. It's because she doesn't want to watch the show anymore. But she doesn't know how to tell you because she's nonverbal. So I was clear, I would rather Jack be more stimulated by activities. And I set up her little therapy table with all of her puzzles. She has a whole little corner with her trampoline and her Sven that we just bought her. Like she has all of her stuff readily available. So after the first week when I noticed that the respite care provider was just sitting at the counter, not doing anything like not even interacting with Jack just sitting there I brought it up to her and I said you know I know you're still trying to get to know Jack and, and whatnot but I like you can you need to interact with her she needs you know to play and these puzzles are made for her hand-eye coordination for her for her small motor functions and we this is what we do during the day so she was like, okay, Emma, she can color, she can paint, she can do her shoelace toy. All of these things are out for her to do with you. I want you to play with her. I want you to, you know, read a book to her. Like, I understand that they're just like babysitters, but you definitely are not coming just to sit at my counter. That's not why you're here. My daughter can do that. 
So we had, like, we kind of brought it up to her. She said, okay. And it's been several more weeks and nothing has changed. In fact, today we, I came, I walked in and I found my daughter. I found Jack in my hallway just crying, like hand over eyes crying. <clears throat> and let me tell you, I felt some type of way about it. I felt so much anger inside because one, nobody's watching her. She's just by herself. Two, she's so upset that she's like really crying. And if you know Jack, she's not like a big crier. She's a yeller, she's a hitter, she's a thrower. If she's crying, it's because she's really upset. So I pick her up and I bring her into the living area. And the respite care provider is just sitting at the counter in the same spot. Doesn't even flinch. Doesn't get up and pretend like she's doing something. Just sitting there. And she's like, oh, Jack. And I was like, okay, I can't do this. So... I made the call to have her replaced with somebody else. And it's like disheartening because it's like our first experience with respite care and Jack has become more irritable in the mornings before school. And I know it has a lot to do with bringing somebody new in the house, but it's been like several weeks. Jack knows who she is now. Um, in fact, like, even today, so it kind of made me sad that I had to still let her go, but, like, they were sharing an orange together, finally. Like, Jack had to get up on the counter and sit next to her, and that was the only interaction that I saw happen today, and that was Jack's doing. That wasn't the respite care provider's doing, and my daughter is three. She shouldn't have to go out of her way to get the attention of her caregiver, so... We're going to strike this experience and start over. We have a new girl starting on Monday and we're super excited about it. Is that my daughter walking behind me? No, that's a boy. Oops, sorry, smart. Um, but we're gonna try it again. And this is like one of those things in this journey that we haven't experienced before, but we now have gotten our feet wet. And now we know, like we have to be super clear, like I, sent the care provider, like the foundation or the company or whatever, a very long message just saying, look, I am looking for somebody that's going to interact with my daughter, not somebody that's just going to sit there to collect a paycheck. I need somebody that is going to care for her, love her, you know, and I don't mean love her like, oh my gosh, I love her like she was my own, but like just human decency, like attention, like I'm here, let's read a book, let's play. And I know not everybody's like that, but if you're cold and disconnected from human interaction, please don't become a respite care provider because Jack is already dealing with her own emotional issues. She needs somebody there that she can connect to and feel safe with and comfortable, not uncomfortable in her own home. So that's kind of our experience today. And it made me kind of sad because I see, I've watched other videos and I've seen other uh, providers or families that have providers and it's like their relationships with these providers are so heartwarming and these providers just love these kids. And then there's my experience where our provider couldn't even be bothered to get out of the chair. She would come, sit down, play on her phone, eat her lunch, maybe say a word or two to Jack and it wasn't all bad I don't want to and I'm just really upset today just because I found my daughter so upset and by herself with no supervision but it's not all bad but for me y'all if you know me one time it only takes one time for me you do something that I don't agree with and you're out like I just don't I don't give second chances when it comes to my sweet baby and it's a learning experience for all of us so maybe next time I give a little bit more direction or I'm even more clear with what I expect from our care provider but I thought I did that this time and I just couldn't allow my daughter to be unsupervised 
and so irritable and upset in the presence of her care provider. So we'll see. We start again Monday. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully it works out. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. I have a lot of stuff to do. I have to go grocery shopping, gotta clean my house. Gotta drop kids off at school, pick kids up, meet Jack on the bus, and go to sleep because I have to go back to work tomorrow morning. So I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, y'all please subscribe. Just hit that button, just subscribe. You know you want to. I'm pretty cool to hang out with, so subscribe. Bye. Where's Sissy? Is she over there? No. Go check over there. Go check over there. Go check over there. <laughs> she got you. <laughs> That was funny. Okay, come here. When Sissy comes, come here, come here, come here. Come here, shh, 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 go. Go, boom. You don't know how to be the, the scarer. Get her, get her, get her, get her, get her. <laughs> oh, get your backpack. Bus. Yep, that's your bus. You so excited? Go. Go. You need help? 